Welcome to the Sky at Night magazine podcast, your monthly dose of astronomy on demand. As well as all the scientists and astronomers that are here at the National Astronomy Meeting, there's also someone else very special who I'd like you to meet. She's in here. This is Bridget, a prototype model for Europe's ExoMars rover, planned for launch to the Red Planet in the next four to six years. The ExoMars mission will look for signs of life on Mars by roving over the surface and using a specialist drill to dig deep beneath the Martian soil. I caught up with Nikki Soper, a systems engineer working on the ExoMars mission, to talk to her about Bridget and her technology. Who's actually putting the whole package together? Well, EODS Astrium in Stevenage are working on the rover vehicle. So they're going to be designing and building and delivering just the rover vehicle as you can kind of see here today. And all of the things that it's doing today, this is a prototype model, is it? Yes, Bridget here is a breadboard model. She's about three years old now. And we've been using her to do lots of testing of the locomotion system, the wheels, the suspension system, and more recently, the cameras on Bridget. As you can see, she can drive around in a sandpit a bit like this. Um, we can see how she can climb over rocks um, and climb over slopes and how she actually manages to negotiate them, keeping all six wheels on the floor. Bridget as a test bed has six wheel drive and a four wheel steer, but the actual rover will also have an additional capability to do wheel walking, which means there's an extra joint on each of the wheels so that, if, that each wheel can move forward separately and that means it can climb up a steeper slope. And she's specially adapted for the Martian surface, isn't she, with these special wheels? Yeah, the, the wheels and the suspension system are specifically, like I said, to keep all six wheels on the floor when she can climb a rock as big as the diameter of a wheel or a slope up to 40 degrees. That's what she's been designed for. Right, and also the ExoMars rover will have a drill, won't it, to drill down into the sand. How is that going to be put onto the actual rover itself? Well, it's the first time that a rover has been to Mars with a drill that's going to go down two metres. So it's going to be the first time we can actually test samples on Mars two metres under the surface, which is going to be excellent for the instrument package that's going to be on there. That will actually be attached to the front of the rover, um, and it's not on this prototype, but um, as you can see, there is sort of space at the front, between the front two wheels, where the, the drill will be designed to attach horizontally to be stowed and it will um, deploy vertically and then drill down when it's needed. Now we can actually see Bridget's two eyes and these have got a special image recognition software haven't they for navigating their way around Mars? Yes, um, the rover vehicle for the first ever European Mars rover vehicle will be quite groundbreaking because it's going to have an autonomous capability. The navigation system um, will have its two eyes at the top of the mast, the cameras which will take pictures from them um, develop a digital elevation model um, which the rover software will be able to identify navigable and non-navigable areas um, by itself. Um, and from that, it can plot a path and autonomously navigate from one point to another. So from ground control, they might suggest maybe a rock 100 metres away that looks very interesting to do some scientific experiments on. And the rover can then plot a path for that, say, 100 metres on its own, send all the pictures back on Earth so we can check what it's doing and make sure it doesn't get into trouble. But it has that autonomous capability. Now, will those, uh, the, that actual software be used for perhaps looking for interesting science targets? Um, there are some different cameras um, called pan cameras, which will be on the same stereo bench on the mast and they will be mainly used for science for looking for science targets. Well Nikki thank you for introducing us to Bridget and thank you for talking to Sky Night magazine. Thank you. Well that's it from me here at the University of Hertfordshire and the National Astronomy Meeting 2009. We hope you've enjoyed this special edition of the Sky Night magazine podcast. Until next time, goodbye. In the June issue of Sky at Night magazine, we've got the ultimate guide to observing the sun, including how to make your own solar projection box and help solar science. Plus, we look at the asteroids that just missed Earth, and you can also get a free episode of Heather Cooper's Cosmic Quest radio documentary on the cover CD. So don't forget to pick up a copy at your nearest store.